What am I stepping on here? Stepping on sand. Let's start that bit again, shall we, Dougal? Hello and welcome to How to Hebrides. In this episode, episode number three, we're going to be looking at the beautiful Isle of Lewis. Places to camp, places to visit and food and drink. We start off in Stornoway, the largest town in the Outer Hebrides and Laxdale Holiday Park. Laxdale is a full facility site offering hard standings, free showers, electric hookups, chemical disposal point and is obviously very convenient for the nearby town of Stornoway. Over on the other side of the island another full facility site is the friendly family run Elan Freich site at Schorbost. Elan Freich offers hard standings, electric hookups, metered showers and a lovely small kitchen and common room. Hebrides Campervan Overnight Parking is at Lower Sharda on the road to Ness. It's a friendly, full facility site, all hard standing, offering free showers, chemical disposal, electric hookups and so on. I stayed here and I paid £16 for the night. Ardroyal Sands Campsite is an informal campsite which has evolved from a wild camping spot. As such there is no electric hookup. However, there is a modern facility block with metered showers, fresh water and chemical disposal. It's all hard standing pitches, there is no view of the bay but you only have to walk up a small bank to enjoy the stunning view of Uig Bay. Prices have recently increased, however it's still a very reasonable £15 for the night. Now we move on to Kniep campsite which will often see spelt two different ways. One is the English spelling and one is the Gaelic spelling. It's a busy little campsite but you can see why. It is right on the beach. There's a facility block with metered showers and electric hookups are currently being installed but they are not being installed on the sea view pitches at the moment. There are a few hard standings, but pitches are mostly grass. Pricing is a little bit random. I paid £15 for one man and a van, and my friends next door for two people, a caravan and a van, paid £10. Hmm. For a comprehensive list of all the campsites in the Isle of Lewis, please download the information leaflet from Outer Hebrides Tourism. I'll leave the link in the description below. Now we're going to take a look at just a few of the many places to visit while in the Isle of Lewis. And there is no better place to start than the Callanish Standing Stones. These were erected over 5,000 years ago, predating Stonehenge in England, and unlike Stonehenge, you can walk amongst the stones. During the day, a visitor centre is open, but you have more chance of enjoying the stones to yourself if you visit very early in the morning. Being a lover of social history, I then made tracks up the road to the Arnold Black House. The Black House itself was built in the mid-1800s and the family shared the building with their animals as the animals provided a degree of warmth.
Also adding warmth was the peat fire in the middle of the sitting room, which was never allowed to go out. At the Arnold Black House, the peat fire still burns all day, every day, and as there is no chimney, just a hole in the roof, the air is thick with smoke. You'll see the house pretty much as it was left when the last family moved out, with its box beds and peat stack in the garden. But what is incredible is that the family lived like this exactly until they moved out, and that was in 1965. In the early 20th century, new regulations stipulated that livestock had to be separated from living quarters, and newer houses appeared, which became known as white houses. At Arnold, you can also visit a white house, which is restored as to how it would have been in the early 1960s. From Arnold, if you carry on up to the northwest tip of Lewis, you eventually reach the lovely little township of Ness. And then from Ness, you can head to the famous Butt of Lewis. Spot the wildlife, enjoy the view, but whatever you do, don't get too close to the edge. The 1st of January 2019 marks the 100th anniversary of the Yolara disaster and I could not visit Stornoway without paying my respects and viewing the commemorative artwork. Just outside Stornoway is the Yolara Memorial close to where the ship, the HMY Yolara, which is Gallic for Eagle, struck rocks. 201 people lost their lives just yards from home, having survived the horrors of the First World War. In Stornoway Harbour is a beautiful and poignant work of art commemorating the 100th anniversary. Stornoway has a terrific arts centre and lanta, some great independent shops, but what surprised me the most was that in the grounds of Lewes Castle, itself a stunning museum, there is a comprehensive network of mountain bike trails. I headed to Bespoke Cycles of Stornoway to have a chat about them with the owner, Alistair. Hello. Now I never knew that we had all these cycle trails here in the castle grounds, which is brilliant. You've got blue, red, green. Um, all yeah. sorts. Yeah. We've been very lucky to have these built in the last few years. Uh, perfect that they're on the back door. I've got a fleet of e-bikes that you can hire out. I'm sorry Alistair, could you say that again please? I've got a fleet of e-bikes that you can hire out. I've got a fleet of e-bikes that you can hire out. These are electric mountain bikes? Yeah. You should have we go. You should have we go. Oh! <laughs> 
<laughs> that was fun. Oh dear, that has got to be one of the best mountain bike sessions I ever had. One thing Alistair said is that some people say that these electric assisted bikes are cheating, but on the other hand, you're more likely to go out and actually go out in the first place if you, uh, for example, if you've got a dodgy knee or if you're not at full fitness and you still have the most amazing amount of fun. The trails in Lewes Castle are just fantastic. And even if you're not really into mountain biking, I would really, really recommend you give it a go. It is absolutely brilliant fun. One of the things I really love about the Isle of Lewis is that Sunday is strictly observed as a day of rest, so most shops will be closed. Some cafes and attractions do still open though in peak tourist season. Back to food and drink and we're staying in Stornoway at Bespoke Cycles where you'll find the Hub Cafe. It's a fantastic chilled place and downstairs is an accessible and dog friendly area where friends can feel so welcome, you might just end up sitting for hours. Alistair also makes quite a claim about his coffee. Oh, but our coffee, I think, is the best in town, if not possibly the Outer Hebrides. And why is it the best coffee? Uh, well, I'm very particular about my coffee, um, and I tried uh, various different beans when, when we were opening up. Um, settled on the Inverness Coffee Roasting Company, and their beans are absolutely gorgeous. In Stornoway, there is a huge choice of places to eat, from cafes to posh restaurants. For food shopping, you have two large supermarkets, and next to the co-op is McLeod's Butchers, known locally as Charlie Barley's, where apparently the Stornoway black pudding is the best you can buy. Also don't miss the Good Food Boutique and the Hebridean Tea Company, which are near the tourist information office. If you're on the west coast, there's no need to head back to Stornoway to do your shopping. The Ui community shop has everything you need, including fuel. Meanwhile, earlier as I was driving to Ness, I stopped off at the Wobbly Dog, a new cafe where dogs are equally as welcome as their owners. I enjoyed a chat with Mark, one of the co-owners, about the new business. Um, Mark, you're the chief baker. Can you tell us a little bit about your business, please? Hi, yeah. Uh, I'm Mark, my wife Sheila and I opened the Wobbly Dog six weeks ago. Uh, a labour of love to restore what was the village shop. I do all the baking, Sheila does all the making, lots of crafts and gifts up here, but more importantly, Ultimately, we're a dog from the cafe. So that's just a tiny taste of what the Isle of Lewis can offer. Stunning beaches, rich culture, stacks of sporting activities and a landscape that will blow you away, but only if you go looking for it. So there you have it, I hope you enjoyed that. Please be aware that this is just a taster of what you can expect when you come and visit. This is not meant to be a comprehensive guide by any stretch of the imagination. For further details about planning your visit to the Outer Hebrides, please check out all the links in the description below. I'll leave links to the Outer Hebrides tourism website and all their leaflet downloads and also of any business or campsite we've mentioned today I'll be leaving links in the description below so if you have any further questions or you want further information please check those links out. A massive thank you to Outer Hebrides tourism for supporting this series and a huge thank you to Adria UK for sponsoring this series making it happen and for the loan of this gorgeous Adria Twin Supreme van conversion which we're using for the trip. 
please check out Adria's website. Again, I'll leave it in the description below. Beautiful range of caravans, camper vans and motorhomes and they're really well worth a look. So a huge thank you to Adria UK. In the meantime, it just leaves me to say from Dougal and from me, thanks for tuning in. There, did you enjoy that Dougal? Did you enjoy that? Uh, did you? Uh, he never smiles.